All right, lesson 22, you are going to create your own game. So level three, create your variables. First, you will need to create all of your variables and put them in the variables area of your code. Don't forget, each variable needs a label name and a starting value. You can change the value of the variable later in your code. So here's where we're going to be creating the variables. So in my game, I'm going to have two variables, one for the score and one for lives. You can do what you want to do in your game. This is just what I'm doing in my game. I'll make the starting value for lives five. And that's it for this level. So once you do that, you can move on. Level four, create your backgrounds. Next, you will need, you will create all of the background functions that you need for your game. Some games only have one background and others have more than one that is chosen according to user score or another aspect of gameplay. You will need to create a function for each separate background in your game. You will write the code to choose the correct background in the next level. After you create your functions, test them by calling them inside the draw loop. One background per test. All right, so I'm going to make three backgrounds. And here's the area where you create your functions. So I go to my functions drawer. And let's create all three functions right now. All right, so I'm going to name this one background one, background two, and background three. And these yellow triangles are because I have not called these functions yet, so don't worry about those yellow triangles. Let's see. Well, what do I want the color of the first background to be? Let's say red. Second background, let's say blue. And the third background, let's make it black. That's not an option, so I'm going to type it in. Okay, so we test the background by calling the function. background one okay that works so now we're going to call background two and remember since this is be being called beneath background one that is the background that will show because the order of your code matters so that worked now we're going to test out background three which should appear black and yes that worked okay so we've created our backgrounds we're done with level four. Again, you can do whatever backgrounds you want. This is your project, your design a game. So don't just follow me if you don't want to do these things. If you don't want to have a black background, change that up. If you don't want three backgrounds, choose how many you want. Okay, so level five is display boards. Now that your backgrounds are working, you can add your display boards. Most games have a scoreboard, but you might also want to display information about player level or lives remaining. Look at Lesson 16, Puzzle 9 for an example of how to make a scoreboard. For each display board, create a function to display the information. Call the function in the draw loop. Be sure to test your boards by changing the starting value of your variables and making sure the board also changes when you run the code. So I'm going to look at Lesson 16, Puzzle 9. I open it in a new tab, and here we see a scoreboard. So I'm going to look in the code and see if I can copy and paste the code for the scoreboard. Right there, it says Draw Score. So this is the code for the scoreboard. I'm going to copy and paste this. If you go to Lesson 16, level 9 and you don't have the correct code for draw score just go into your drawing drawer and try and find these blocks and put them 
in the draw loop to create the scoreboard. I believe we're going to want this to be beneath each background. So in the draw loop, you might want to click right here on line 12. And I think this should work. However, on background three, since background three is black and this text fill is black, it might be a problem. So I'm going to change this to white. Okay, great. And that worked for score. So now we, if you're following this video, you also have a variable for lives. This should also be displayed up here. So what can we do? We can use a coder's best friend, which is copy and paste. And we'll take this, copy it, control C on the keyboard, click down here, make sure your cursor is right there and hit control V on your keyboard. All right, but why is this not going to work? This isn't going to work because we have this saying score. What do we want it to say? Lives. Okay. And then what do we want this to say? Lives. Make sure there are no quotation marks in this one because that is just referencing the variable, the lives variable and the quotation marks will mess that up. So now, Okay, as you can see, lives and score are overlapping. So we want to change the X position of lives. How can we do that? Well, this is the text. So we're actually going to want to change the X position of the text and the variable. So let's make it 105 and see what that does. And we'll make this 170. See what that does. Oh, that's actually perfect. I kind of want these texts to be smaller, though. So there's more room on the screen for gameplay. So I'm going to change this to 12, text size 12, and text size 12. And let's see, can you see that? Yeah, you can still see that. That works. Maybe a little bigger. Okay, great. And it looks like... Oh, we were supposed to create a function to display the information. Okay. Hmm. Okay, that does make the code a little more neat. Okay. All right, let's do that. Let's name it display boards. And I think all we have to do is cut this and paste it inside the display boards function. All right, so all right, my cursor is not showing up, so I'm going to click inside on the show text mode. I'm going to hit control V on my keyboard, go back to show blocks. And now what do we have to do? We have to call the function in the draw loop. Display boards. And I think it should still work. Yep, it does. All right, then moving on to level six. Choose your backgrounds. Now that you have the backgrounds that you need, you'll write the code to choose the correct background. You've seen this done in lesson 19, level nine, uh, level 11. Let's see what they're talking about. Oh, okay, this is where we have, okay. So once the rabbit gets a certain score, the background will change. So that's, we're going to do the same thing in our game. As soon as we get a certain score, the background's going to change. Okay, so when the bunny gets four coins, the background changes. So here they have an if-else statement, but in my game, I have three backgrounds. So that might be a problem if you want to do if-else. I don't think that would work for three backgrounds. So I think I'm going to do three different if statements. And I believe, I believe I'm going to do that in the draw loop. Here, let's see how they did it in here. Did they put it in a function or did they just put if statements in the draw loop? Let's see. Okay. 
So it was an if statement in the draw loop that referenced these functions. Okay. All right, we can do that. I think that is three if statements. Okay, so hmm. let's say if score is less than 10, if score is less than 10, we'll do background one. You know what? I, okay. And now I think an if else statement would be better for the last two backgrounds because I don't know how I would do it with three if statements. I'm sure you could do it, but I can't think of how you would right now. So I'm going to do an if else statement. If score is less than 10, background one. If score is greater than 10, hmm. No, no, I don't I don't think I do know how to do that. Hmm. I think I, I let's let's stick with three if statements. So if score is now I'm gonna do greater than if score is greater than ten. Hmm. Or we'll say greater than nine. Because I think if score is less than ten, that means nine. If score is greater than 9, it means 10. All right, we'll do background 2 here. And then we'll do another one. We'll say, whoops, we need another if statement. And now we'll say, if score is greater than 19, so if it's 20 or more, background 3. Score. And hopefully this works. Okay, so how do we test this? Well, we go into our score and we change the variable. So right now, background one should show. Is background one red? Yes. So now if we put 10, should be blue. Okay, that's great. So here's the real test. 20 should be black. All right, perfect. We're good. Let's just make sure, though. I'm going to put 19 in here. All right, still blue. Okay, we're good.